What's up y'all, welcome back for another video. If you're new here, my name is Bro and I ride a 2019 Kawasaki Vaquero. Now about two years ago, I posted this video where I've listed out my mods and told you five things that I loved and five things that I didn't like so much about my Kawasaki Vaquero. Well, since then I've ridden about 30 or 35,000 miles and I've gotten a few questions about how things are holding up. Well, today I'm here to bring you that answer and walk you through my mods and how they're holding up after all this time. Okay, y'all, I'm out of the sun and I'm back in the garage and I'm ready to lay out these mods for you. But first, a couple of disclaimers. Number one, I'm not an expert, okay? I say that all the time. So sometimes I don't know the technical term, but I know how everything works, okay? I'm not here to impress anybody with big words. I'm just here to share my knowledge. So somebody who might be like me who's trying to learn themselves, I can give you a little bit of insight. Number two, I'm not getting paid by anybody to do anything, okay? <laughs> so everything that you see on my bike was paid for by me. Nobody's sponsoring me and I'm not getting any outside influence to say the things that I say about my parts. It is all my opinion, okay? So with that being said, let's roll the tape. All right, so first I'm going to just lay out all the mods that I've done on my bike and then I'll go back and do in detail about each part and what I experienced with it. So first up is my wheel, updated the wheel. My headlight, I have lights behind the louvers for a hidden light effect. My turn signal lights here. I have new grips, new handlebars, and mirrors. I put on a tour pack with the mount and added a backrest. I have vinyl wrap all over my bike, including on the front fender, front fairing, and on the saddlebags. And I also have um, a new radio and six and a half inch speakers. Highway pegs, everybody has highway pegs, so. That's not really a mod, but I do have them. All right, so first up, the wheel. So I started with a 16 inch stock tire and upgraded it to a 21 inch tire. Um, when it came, the wheel came with the tire. Uh, it came with an Avon tire, which got me about 20,000 miles. Then when I got my tire switched out, they put a Dunlop tire on there. And I think I'm sitting at between 20 and 25,000 miles with this tire. And I still have a little bit of tread left for probably one more trip. So on average, I'm getting about 20 to 22,000 miles on a tire. Um, that's with a lot of highway miles. As far as the ABS, um, I have read that some people, when they put the 21 inch on there, they lose their ABS forever. That didn't happen for me. When I installed my ABS, when I installed my 21 inch wheel, my ABS light came on for about two months. After that, one day I woke up, I got on the bike, I rode out, and that light never came back on. The only time it stays on is when I turn the bike on, along with all the other lights that come on. But other than that, I have ABS with my 21-inch wheel. That is for me personally. Now, I've seen it. This does not happen for everybody, so I guess I just got the luck of the draw. But I do have ABS with my 21-inch wheel. Next up, the headlight very uneventful the installation was easy i don't have an installation video on my headlight because it was before my youtube days but it was a very uneventful install very easy as far as the maintenance and the upkeep i haven't had any issues with it whatsoever the only thing is when i did install it i never and even after taking my fairing off multiple times i have never wired in the daytime running light and that's only because the wire is too short to reach the power wire so i need to extend it and then tap it in really just a matter of laziness other than that it's a great light so next up is probably my favorite mod and this is my turn signal lights now my turn signal lights look much better than the original in my opinion okay this is this is my opinion i just am not a fan of the lollipop this is what used to be on there okay this is what it is now and it just looks so much better to me I really want to get rid of the lollipop on the back, but I just haven't gotten around to it because I'm still trying to learn how to do that wiring in the back. But as far as this, my absolute favorite mod, not only because it looks good, but because it lights up the road. Like when I tell you this combined with the LED headlight night and day, literally, it just lights up the road and I love it. Now maintenance and upkeep, you get what you pay for, right? So I got these lights between for between six and ten dollars 
and I bought them multiple times, which is why I'm giving you a range. Every time I bought these, they're between six and ten dollars. Now, with these cheap lights, you get what you pay for. So they're very bright, but after a while, the individual lights within the strip will kind of go out, leaving gaps in the light, and it doesn't look that great. Um, but it's still very bright. That's my only issue. And that's just with this pro this particular product. Okay. Now I could go out and get some $250 front turn signal lights, but that's my prerogative. And I probably will never do that. I'm okay with these cheap lights and I'm okay with replacing them because the replacement is just, the swap out is real easy for me. So, um, there you go. But the turn signal lights in general, whether you get $6 lights or $250 lights, they just look good on the bike in my opinion. So now that we've talked about it, let's be about it. And let me go ahead and show you how these lights are looking. All right, so if you look really closely, you can see the issue that I was talking about with the gap in the lights. Um, I think I did this, but on my last set of lights, they just went out on them on their own. So again, that's the only issue that I've had with these lights. As you can see, they are nice and bright and I hope that the camera is doing it justice, which I know it probably won't. It looks so great in person. Also the daytime running lights, you probably can't see it from the camera, but the daytime lights are on the top and on the bottom. These are the high beams. So I, I think if I plug the daytime running lights in, on the top and the bottom, we'll get a much brighter light, but all over, it looks pretty good. And on that note, stay tuned for an install video on these because I just installed these new ones. So um, I'll be posting the install video on that, how I wired it, how I put it on, all that. So you'll see inside the fairing, all of that, okay? Just stay tuned, hit subscribe so you know when that video drops. Okay, so let's switch to the rider perspective, which is right here. This is what we look at for 100% of our miles, right? Because we can't look at them from any other angle. So here I have my bars, my grips, my mirrors, my radio, and my speakers. But let's start with the easy part first, and that would be my bars. So these are 12 inch JSR eight bars. And when I put them on my arm position and my shoulders were a lot better. Now I will say riding recently, my shoulders have started to lock up with these. I don't know if I need to go lower or if I need to go higher, but when I first started, these were really, really good for my shoulders and my arms. Next up, my grips. Now, if y'all were here for the grip video where I showed, showed you where I installed these, they still kicking. They are still kicking, okay? <laughs> They still kicking, they still here. I held these joints together with glue and that glue is the bomb, so we good. As far as the mirrors, um, I know a lot of people don't really like, um, they don't really like these small mirrors like this. Um, but I love them, I love them. They do, they serve their purpose. I put these on like when I bought the bike and I was very proud of myself because I think it was probably like one of my first mods I ever did. Right now they're a little rusty dusty and they kind of got a little fade into them. They're not shiny anymore, but these are very durable. I love these. I did have to get mirror risers for them to fit my perspective. So this extra little um, bolt right here or nut, whatever you call this, that's a, that's a riser. So it just makes it a little bit higher. Now let's get into the music, the radio, the speakers, because that's the part that probably keeps us awake the most on the bike, right? So I upgraded my stock head unit to a Kenwood head unit and my speakers I upgraded at first to DS18s and then later I upgraded to DB Drive audio speakers. Now I'll get into the speakers later, but let's start with the head unit. So with the head unit, installation videos, speaker installation videos, I have all that on my YouTube, so just check the links below. As far as the maintenance and the upkeep, the radio head unit is what I've had the most issues with and it only gives me issues in the rain. And during my first few rides with this head unit in rainstorms for a couple of hours, I learned that the Kenwood Marine Grade radio head unit is water resistant 
not waterproof, okay? Because when this head unit gets into a whole bunch of water, and I'm talking about the bottom fell out the sky and you're riding in it for a couple of hours, it will give you this notification send service. When that notification ends up on your screen, it renders your radio head unit unusable, okay? You're not getting no music, you can't hit no buttons, it's just basically dead with a light on and some letters on the screen. Now, when this first happened, I thought I was gonna have to get a new head unit. I thought it had just like died. And then I kind of freaked out because I'm like, well, what am I gonna do if I ride in rain? I can't deal with this. I can't get a new head unit every time I hit rain. So I started doing my research and basically you gotta just let it dry out. That's basically the short answer. But you can also let it dry out and you can um, do a reset sequence on the back of it, which requires you taking your fairing off and doing all this. Ro here with the post edit correction. You don't have to take the fairing off to do the reset sequence. You can use the buttons on the front to do the reset. However, I removed the fairing so that I had free range of motion. I could access the buttons easily and so that I could make sure that my head unit was completely dry. All right, when I turn this key, the um, the Kenwood sign should come up, not protecting, so let's see. Mm -hmm. That's what should happen. We're back in business. The longest amount of time it took for my radio head unit to dry and be active again took about a month and a half. And when that happened, that's when I realized I got to do something. So that's when I realized I had to take the fairing off, make sure it was like dry. I physically dried it with the hair dryer and then did a reset sequence on the back that I found on YouTube. And now I will say the other day I got caught in the rain for like 15 minutes. No issues with my radio. So yeah. <laughs> just keep that in mind that if you get this radio and you ride in rain, you probably will experience that. Um, I know I'm not the only one that has, so just bear that in mind. All right. Now as for my speakers, so I initially started out with DS 18 speakers and I'll show you why I had to switch. This happened. See that? Yep. Real ugly. That happened. So I started doing my research to see what other speakers I could get that would be a little bit more durable, especially since I ride in the rain. Um, and I think that happened because I rode in the rain. So I upgraded to DB Drive. Also, I had heard and seen great recommendations about it. So I decided to buy this particular speaker. I love it. I haven't had any issues. I will say I have not ridden in as much rain as I have with the DS18s. Also, I'm going to show you guys this, um, this speak on the left side, like the, I don't know what it's called, but when you look at it, you'll see it. It's gone. It's almost like my radio, my music was too loud and it just burst. Um, so yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what that's about, but, uh, I did turn down my gains a little bit so that it doesn't happen to the other one. All right, y'all, we are down to the nitty gritty and it is all about the tour pack and the mount that it sits on. Now, recently I've seen quite a few negative reviews and comments regarding the mount in that it can't carry heavier loads, it vibrates the tour pack on the road, it's unstable, et cetera, et cetera. Speaking for myself and my experience for these past two years with this mount, I've never had any issues, okay? Part of my pre-ride check is to check the screws underneath the bottom of the tour pack and check the screws inside the saddlebags. And in this time when I do all my checks, it never comes loose and never, I've never lost the bolt. Um, I've just never had any issues with this mount. Now, if I shake this, you can see it shakes a little bit. Um, that's never bothered me on a bike ever. So, um, it's stable. It's stable for me. Now, if you want something that's just not going to move at all, then I'm sure there are other mounts for you. But for me personally, this one has worked for me for the past two years, so.
And that's pretty much it. I tried to be as informative as possible in the least amount of time possible. And those of you who watch my videos on a regular know, this is way past my time limit. So I'm pretty sure I left something out. If so, just leave a comment down below and I'll try my best to answer your question or find the answer to your question. But until next time for the next ride, bye y'all.